Welcome to DEF CON 3. I'm KT McFarland. As we count down the hours to the final presidential debate this election cycle, let's look back on an American who laid the foundation to what we're going to see in the debate stages, William F. Buckley Jr. Well, our next guest just wrote a book about Buckley. It's called A Torch Kept Lit, The Great Lives of the 20th Century. Here's the author, and you'll recognize him. He's Fox's very own chief Washington correspondent, James Rosen. James, thanks so much for being here. KT, uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So who was William F. Buckley, Jr.? William F. Buckley, Jr. was the founder of the modern American conservative movement. He founded National Review magazine. He hosted Firing Line on television from 1966 to 1999, the longest uh, talk show in TV history with a single host. Uh, he wrote a syndicated column, best-selling books, and he really was a multimedia celebrity. Uh, he made the cover of Time magazine in 1967, and under a caricature of Buckley, it said, William F. Buckley, Jr., conservatism can be fun. Ronald Reagan calls William F. Buckley and National Review. Uh, he identifies them as the, as the influences that converted Ronald Reagan from liberalism to con uh, conservatism. And Reagan called Buckley specifically the most influential journalist and intellectual of our times. Uh, and this book, A Torch Kept Lit, Great Lives of the 20th Century, offers uh, over 50 eulogies that Bill Buckley either delivered at funeral memorial services or published uh, for some of the great towering figures of his time. There's a section for presidents of the United States. And because Buckley and Reagan had such a close relationship, Buckley's eulogy for Ronald Reagan is a deeply moving piece of writing. There's also a section for members of the community of arts and letters, people like John Lennon, Elvis Presley, Johnny Carson. And I like to say, KT, that a torch kept lit is the only place in the world where you will see the conservative economist, Milton Friedman, mm -hmm. right alongside Jerry Garcia of The Grateful <laughs> Dead. Okay, well, so talk to us about the influence that, that Buckley continues to have. You said that he was a major influence on President Ronald Reagan, but that was 1980. How does his legacy continue to today? Buckley was the first a palatable conservative for the masses, if you will, in the media age. He used his wit, his good looks, his family fortune, his skills as a debater uh, to make conservatism palatable in the media age. And in a substantive way, what he did was he fused the different strands into one unified theory, if you will, of conservatism, which involved a strong national defense, uh, a belief in small government, right, mm -hmm. and a, a, an, ex, an, a, an explicit uh, devoutness of faith. And today, you see that these are still chiefly, despite the divisions in the Republican Party today and in the conservative movement today, are the things that conservatives like to coalesce around, a belief in small government, a belief in a strong national defense and a muscular foreign policy abroad, uh, and also a belief in traditional values. And I think while Buckley would be dismayed by a lot of what he sees in today's political climate, uh, he would agree that those still remain the, the, the core principles for conservatives. If Buckley were alive today and you had to say, who's the new, who's this generation's William F. Buckley, who would it be? Politician, writer, news journalist? Present company excluded <laughs> uh, and propriety <laughs> forbidding. I can tell you that I do a very good William F. Buckley impersonation. In fact, the man himself once said to me, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll tell you that I interviewed him for Fox News in the year 2000 mm -hmm. uh, for his 75th birthday. Uh, we had three cameras up there in New York uh, at Buckley's Maisonette on the Upper East Side. And uh, I, you know, Buckley came from a well-off family. He married into a well-off family. He was an avid yachtsman and sailor. He wrote best-selling books about his passages across the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans uh, with his friends. So I said to him, this was the year 2000, Mr. Buckley, when was the last time that you felt insecure about something? Anything at all, financially insecure, emotionally insecure, physic in a bad neighborhood after dark, anything at all. When was the last time? And he thought earnestly for a moment, and he said, uh, there have been uh, some rather anxious moments at sea. Uh, I remember in particular one horrific squall that came through, and I wasn't entirely sure we weren't going to drown. And I said, and what year was that, sir? And he said, 1958. <laughs> So let's recap. The la I ask you to think about when was the last time you felt any, a twinge of insecurity about anything at all under the sun, and you have to dimly hearken back 42 years. That, KT, is a life well lived. Oh, absolutely. James, you're the best. Thanks so much for being here. And Thank everybody, you very much. immediately go out and get this book, okay? A Torch Kept Lit. And that's it for DEF CON 3. I'm KT McFarlane. Thanks for joining us.